The episode begins in 2011. Alicia wakes up inside a morgue. She remembers her own name by looking at her tag, which she exchanges with a different body. She then rushes home, packs her bags, and moves to a different city. Back in the present, James is shocked upon discovering that Alicia is also one of the dead. It means that she had a hand in the entire resurrection. James wants to go out and investigate, but he has to stay with his wife and the newborn for some time. Sarah finally wakes up after the surgery, but has a nasty headache. She also died during the surgery and came back to life, but she doesn't know that yet. Her revival is similar to Vic's, as she has been sent to kill Kate and the group and put an end to unnatural life. A while later, James goes to the barn and finds out that someone has trashed it. Moreover, Alicia has disappeared with her belongings. They transfer to a secluded lake house, much safer than the barn. James wants to see where Vic is buried, but as they walk toward the grave, Kirsty falls down. The boundary that makes them sick is somehow shrinking. Oh shit, they are playing Fortnite. This means in time, they will be confined to a smaller space, and if this goes on, they will eventually die. Meanwhile, John is wandering around Urana looking for something to eat. He doesn't trust anyone after Vic's death and doesn't want to let any more people manipulate him. He ultimately finds a house with a woman inside. She introduces herself as Dr. Hasten. She seems to know things about him. She promises to give him the whole truth about his existence if he comes with her to the Norgard headquarters. A naive John follows her, desperate to find out who he actually is. On reaching the headquarters, Hasten reveals that she and Alicia worked together for the past four years on a project that brought the dead back to life. Hasten funded all the experiments, but Alicia hid the results from her because her intentions weren't good. She also reveals that Alicia lied to John about his life because his real name is William and he used to be a captain in the army before his death. The name clicks something in William and he realizes that Hasten is telling the truth. After gaining his trust, Hasten begs him to help their facility in an experiment that they want to perform on him. She makes up an excuse about the benefits of the said experiment and gets him to consent to it. In the meantime, James goes to Melbourne to the hospital where Alicia died. He does some digging and figures that her next of kin is her girlfriend Allison. The two meet to discuss Alicia's thesis that she was working on. Allison doesn't know much about it, but she gives him the files that belong to Alicia. James also watches a video of Alicia that seems entirely different from her usual self. Similar to how Vic turned into a different person after his death, Alicia also remembered her life, but she is clearly not the same person she was before she died. Elsewhere, Patrick is still adamant about getting his estate back because half of it technically belongs to Beau and his family. He meets a lawyer and shows him the will he wrote several years ago, which was also in the box. The will clearly expresses that the estate must have gone to Beau's great-great-grandmother, but it is not enough to sue the current owners. Patrick thinks of something else and walks outside, but gets sick instantly. It is because the invisible border has shrunk further and the resurrected cannot cross it. In the following scene, we are introduced to Beau's stepfather Phil. He works on an old rig in the middle of the ocean and is hardly ever home. One day, he is in the engine section when a loud explosion takes him by surprise. It throws him a few feet away and the impact causes his death. However, then we see Phil returning home to Beau's mother. He has come back from the dead, same as Sarah and Vic. Their mission is to kill the resurrected ones, but who revived them is still a mystery. The family is happy at Phil's arrival, all except for Beau, who doesn't really like him. Upon being told about Patrick and Beau, Phil realizes that his key to finding the resurrected is his stepson. Back in the house, Kate goes to the lake to take a swim and meets a man named Owen. They sit around and talk for a while before James catches them together. He doesn't like their friendship since Owen could be a danger to someone like Kate, but she doesn't care about his opinion anymore. Meanwhile, Charlie and Kirsty start to find out more about their pasts. Charlie sees the letters KKC in his dreams and remembers that he had written those words when he was alive. Similarly, Kirsty finds out that she used to be best friends with a girl named Vicky. The night she died, she and Vicky went out to meet her boyfriend. Later, Kirsty goes through her death reports and finds Vicky's statement, mentioning that they were not well acquainted. It is untrue according to Kirsty's memory, which leads her to think that Vicky knows about her murderer. She starts looking into the matter to find out where Vicky is now. Kate feels trapped in the house and wants to go out on a ride, but her bike runs out of petrol. She goes to Owen's place which is only a minute walk away. He offers her a gallon of petrol before inquiring who the policeman was. He appears to be wary of James because of his profession. While talking, Owen mentions that he was about to roll up a joint when she appeared. They end up smoking together and before they know it, they are making out. Somewhere else, Patrick brings Charlie to his estate, which is currently empty. He wants to set bear traps in the place to stop the Fitzgeralds from claiming the house. While wandering around the estate, Charlie sees the outhouse. 
the scene goes into a flashback. He has just returned from the war and is being held at the outhouse, which was a hospital back then. Charlie is frantic and not himself, which leads the doctor to perform shock therapy on him. Surprised by the revelation, he runs back to the lake house. James goes to the hospital after a long day of work. Sarah yells at him for no reason and is disturbed by something. Ever since she returned from the dead, she seems to have trouble remembering things and is overly agitated. They return home planning to spend the night in peace, but their plan changes with the arrival of Alicia at their doorstep. She needs James's help because Hasten has William and she is about to perform cruel experiments on him. At the Norgard headquarters, Hasten makes William believe that she is on his side. He is made to shower and get ready for minor surgery. He doesn't think much of it before they start cutting his fingers. It turns out that they want to see how fast his cell regenerates. After the surgery, William wakes up with a headache. He regrets trusting the wrong people and runs away when no one is around. The following morning, James brings Alicia to the lake house and finds Kate with Owen together in bed. They avoid talking about the incident for the time being, but James is clearly hurt. Then, Alicia reveals she was the one who brought them back to life. When she returned from the dead, she had no clue how it happened. Hence, she was experimenting with the process alongside Norgard, which led to Kate and the others' revival. According to her, Hasten is the real villain who wants to use them for science. Sounds hot. To confirm this, Kate and James go to the headquarters and meet Hasten. She pretends to be unaware of the experiments, but asks to take a look at Alicia's files. Her desperation makes it obvious that she is hiding something. Just then, she is informed of William's disappearance and has to cut the meeting short. Even after the meeting, Kate and James do not know who they can trust. In the meantime, Phil is trying to win Bo over and does so by sharing his experience on the oil rig. While chatting, Bo lets it slip that he is friends with the dead. Phil immediately asks to be taken to their residence, and even though Bo finds it sketchy, they agree to go. As they get closer, Phil gets a vision. He makes Bo sit in the car and goes outside looking for Vic's grave. After finding it, Phil digs the body up and kisses it, turning Vic into dust. Bo notices this from afar and runs away in fear. In the following scene, James returns home to his wife and daughter. When he is not looking, Sarah texts Vic. Since Vic's phone is with Phil which he stole from the grave, he writes a reply to Sarah. Somehow, they seem to know that they have come back to life for a particular purpose that they must fulfill as soon as possible. They recognize each other as friends and decide to meet soon. When it gets dark, William gets to the lake house. However, he is not here to ask for help from others. He finds Alicia handcuffed to the wall because no one in the house trusts her. For the last few hours, he has had visions of his past and feels a certain connection with Alicia. Hence, he frees her and the two run away. A few hours later, Phil finds the lake house and breaks in with a knife. Although he can kill Kirsty easily, he refrains from doing so because he is looking for Alicia. It turns out that he has been sent for a specific task, which is to kill Alicia and Alicia only. The next day, James goes to the police station and tells Chris everything he knows. Chris wants to get the feds involved, but is strictly asked to not even think of it. Anyone knowing about the resurrected will put their lives at risk. Elsewhere, Alicia reveals that she started the entire experiment to bring William back, and the other's revival was a mistake on her end. When asked why she brought him back, she reveals that she knew him when he was alive. This is impossible, because Alicia wasn't born until a decade after William's death, but he doesn't question it. She tells him that he will remember how they are related when the time comes, but for now, he needs to know that she would do anything to save him. After that, they try to go to the hospital to get his fingers checked. However, they realize the boundary has shrunk even more and the hospital no longer falls inside it. If the shrinking continues, there is a chance William and the group might die. Alicia can figure out how to change this, but not without her thesis and equipment, both of which are in the Norgard lab. Hence, she decides to contact Hasten yet again to save William and the others. Somewhere else, Patrick meets the lawyer once again and shows him the old bloodstains to prove that he was murdered. However, it is not enough to get his property back. He is asked to find solid evidence, which can only be done if there is a living witness to the crime. This also reminds Patrick of the time he promised Bo's great-great-grandmother that he will definitely leave the property to her. Later, Patrick goes to Bo and begs him for help. Initially, Bo doesn't want to get involved, but when Patrick tells him of the promise he made to his lover, the boy agrees. In the afternoon, Sarah goes to the park and meets Phil. They have never met, but they recognize each other instantly. Phil sees that Sarah is having trouble finding out why she is here. He kisses her, which transfers his memory into her, and vice versa. After the process, Sarah knows her purpose clearly. They wish each other the best of luck before separating. In the next scene, Alicia meets Hasten and asks for her thesis and equipment to be brought to her. 
Hasten retaliates that she owes her nothing, since Alicia hid the results of the experiment from her. In a desperate attempt to find a way to save William, Alicia agrees to share William and the others with Norgard. After Hasten leaves to get the requested items, Phil appears in front of Alicia. He chases her with a knife, making her run deep into the woods. Alicia manages to call James during the chase, but she is eventually caught inside the lake. Phil slices Alicia's throat and ends her life. A while later, James arrives and finds the dead body in the water. Soon, William also comes out of the woods and cries, holding Alicia in his arms. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching, 3333 likes and we will make part 4.